A lot of you guys have been asking for some more affordable home theater speakers that don't cost too much but still sound great. Isn't that what we all want? Well today we'll be checking out the Q series from Kef. Now before we get started, if you're new to the channel and love checking out new home theater gear, then be sure to tap the subscribe button for new weekly videos. The first speakers we're going to unbox are the Q50As. These are up-firing speakers, so you can place them atop your left and right speakers, or on the back speakers for reflective height channel effects. Inside is the manual and some rubber pads, and there's also some magnetic grills. Next speaker is the Q250C center channel. Inside this one you only get a manual and no grill. The grill is optional for an extra $35. And lastly we have the Q350s, which are the left and right speakers. Inside here we have the manual, some port plugs, and rubber pads you can purchase the grills for an extra $50. I know what you're thinking, where are the rest of the speakers? Well, this is only a 3.0.2 setup, but I'm going to see how the Q50s do for surrounds in a 5 channel arrangement. I'll of course see how they work for Atmos effects. But size wise, the Q50s are fairly small, measuring 6.8 inches high, by 7 inches wide, by 10 inches deep, and they weigh 9.4 pounds each. They also play down to 96 hertz. The Q250C center channel is 7 inches high, by 20.6 inches wide, by 8 inches deep, and weighs 16.5 pounds. Its response goes down to 57 hertz. The Q350 bookshelves are 14 inches high, by 8 inches wide, by 12 inches deep, and each one weighs 16.8 pounds. These play down to 42 hertz. Each one has a very boxy design with a black vinyl wrap. If you give it the knuckle test, they do sound a bit lively inside. For setup, the KEFs will be hooked up to a Trinov Altitude 16 processor and a 7 channel Macintosh amp. For source material, I'll be playing back 4K Blu rays using a Zapiti Media Player. As comparison, my normal speakers are Barrows and Wilkins CT 7.4 bookshelves in all locations. The 350s will be handling left and right duties, and the 250 is the center channel. Now I know the Q50As are supposed to be used as Atmos toppers, which I'll still test out, but since Kev didn't send me any additional surround speakers, I'll be using the Q50s placed on the sides for surrounds to see how they do. The speakers will be run full range without any help from subwoofers, and I'll be turning off any room correction so I can see how capable they are on their own. First movie I threw in was A Quiet Place on 4K Blu-ray. This movie is great to test out how well a system can handle subtle effects and disappear into the room. Now using the Q50s as surrounds in 5 channel mode, I thought the UniQ drivers captured a ton of nuanced effects. Things that were easy to hear was the crispy sound of wind blowing outside and the crunch of sand while the characters are walking. The environmental atmosphere I heard was so detailed it seemingly made the speakers disappear, which I attribute to the high frequency detail from the UniQ drivers. Having the Q50s as surrounds kept that high end clarity consistent through all the channels. Once I placed them on top of the left and right speakers for Atmos effects, I did hear some extension above my head normally where you'd find the top left channels. So those atmospheric effects that I mentioned, like wind blowing, does kind of sound like it's coming from above. The scene where the kids knock over the lantern has a part where a raccoon runs across the front height channels. I got a semi-sensation there was movement up there, but I could still tell it was coming from above the left and right speakers. Next movie I threw in to test the Q50s even more, and bass response is Midway in Dolby Atmos. I don't think I need to tell you, but there's tons of planes that fly above your head, and a lot of heavy bass. I couldn't really test out how accurate the front to back movement was above my head since they only sent out a limited number of speakers, but like I heard in a quiet place, I got the semi sensation I had my top front speakers turned on. 
If something was really heavy sounding, the Q50s became more localizable, and I can tell they were coming from the top of the front speakers. I think the louder you have them, the more that you're going to notice them, at least in my particular setup. Now, as for bass response, since I'm running these full range, the Q350s put out a lot more bass than I was expecting. That 30Hz pulse during this scene may make you think you've got your subwoofer turned on. Since the 350s are so good at producing bass, I wanted to see how good the Q250C was. So I threw in the shuttle takeoff during Interstellar, which happens to have some serious output in the center channel. I've isolated only the center channel so we can hear just that speaker. All engines look good, beginning roll program. I wasn't expecting much to come from the 250, and unsurprisingly, there wasn't much there in the way of low frequency extension. So during certain movies where you might hear, say, maybe a car move across the front three channels, the car might sound like a Ferrari in the left channel and sound like a go-kart as it moves to the center, then back to sounding like a Ferrari in the right speaker. If you wanted perfect timbre across the front soundstage, you could use another Q350 as a center speaker, but of course, that might look a little odd sitting underneath the TV though it would match the left and right speakers perfectly and sound a lot more robust. All engines look good, beginning roll program. Prepare for stage one separation. Stage one. Stage one. Everybody good, plenty of slaves for my robot colony. Everybody good, plenty of slaves for my robot colony. I think if you were to add the larger Q650 center channel, then this also might be a better match for the 350s. At the time of this video, the Q250C retails for $599. The Q50As are also $599 for a pair, and the Q350s are $699 a pair. I think the real star of the show here are the 350s. They're an all-around great sounding speaker with impressive bass response. The one common characteristic all these speakers share is the very detailed top end. At my normal listening levels, I thought the speakers were smooth, but also towed the line to almost being harsh when the volume was pushed. So there may be some folks out there that might think the treble's too hard. For me personally, I thought it gave movie soundtracks extra air and depth, and it was easy to hear those very subtle effects. Some speakers just can't pick up those little nuances. Now, as mentioned, I was very satisfied with the low-end response of the 350s. The 250 center channel was pretty anemic for its bass, and the Q50s, well, there's zero bass in those. I'm sure the majority of folks are going to be using a subwoofer, so having a center channel or up-firing speakers produce tons of bass might not be a concern, though I do feel all of your speakers should perform equally across the entire spectrum for the most cohesive sound. It's a totally personal preference, of course, and is by no means the perfect solution. As for the Q50A Atmos speakers being used to bounce sounds up to the ceiling, I think what you'd get would be largely dependent on the type of room that you have. For my space, certain effects sounded better than others and did appear to come from above my head. Other times, it just sounded like it was coming from the top of the speakers. If you have the means, I'd say instead of using them as toppers, just mount them high up on the wall since they have that angled enclosure. They also did a respectable job for surround duties so you could very well mount these in all your surround locations. Of course, you'd need to cross them over to a subwoofer since they lack any kind of appreciable bass. In conclusion, since I was sent only a third of a surround system, I'd say the front soundstage was great sounding for its very detailed three-dimensional presence. The 350s could be used for a small system without a subwoofer if you lived in an apartment and didn't want to disturb the neighbors, or maybe you just don't have any room for a sub, though I would have preferred a larger center channel for better tonal matching with the left and rights. Still, the 250C did an excellent job of anchoring dialogue and produced every spoken word with understandable clarity. And if you must use upfiring speakers for height channel effects, you might find the Q50As to be hit and miss. When they hit, they do work pretty convincingly. If it was me though, I'd just take them and mount them high up on the wall for the best experience. So those are my takes on these particular Kef Q series speakers. Maybe next time I can check out a full system and give you a better impression of how they work as a whole. 
but as they stand separately, I'd say the Q350s were the most impressive sounding of the bunch, and definitely worth an audition the next time you go shopping for some new speakers. So tell us your thoughts on the Kef Q series of speakers. Have you heard them, and how do you think they sound? Also, what speakers are in your system? Leave a comment and let us know. As always guys, thanks for watching. If you found this video useful, then give it a like. And if you're not a subscriber, then tap the subscribe button. And we'll see you guys again in the next one.